Welcome to the keynote podcast from Kingdom Faith. Today's message is by Pastor Colin Urquhart. Do we have any believers here this morning? Yes. You know, every now and again, the Lord calls our bluff. It says believers, oh yes, really? That's interesting. What are you going to do to prove it? Nothing by the sound of it. That was a question. I mean, if you say you have faith, what are you going to do to prove it? Let's read what James says. Chapter 2. Verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Now, obviously, these are the deeds that come from faith. Yes? Can such faith save him? Obviously, what uh, James is saying is if we don't have faith that can be demonstrated, we don't have real faith. And as you can only be saved by faith, then the faith works are the demonstration, are the evidence that you have been saved. Yes, yes, yes. Very quiet in here this morning. Isn't that right? Now, of course, faith can be Manifested in a whole lot of different ways. Let's read on. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Now, James is not saying your faith is manifested in providing clothes for others. He's saying if you have love and if you have compassion, then that love and compassion will be evidenced in the works of compassion. In the same way, if you have faith, it will be manifested in the works of faith. You wouldn't say a person had love if they ignored the needs that were presented before them. We're all on the same page here. So he's saying, by the same token, if you have faith, there's going to be evidence of that faith. Don't think your faith is just demonstrated by taking your old cast-offs down to Oxfam shop. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Anybody want dead faith? So your faith is going to lead to faith action, not just to love action, but to faith action. But someone will say... You have faith, I have deeds. You see, there's always been, in, throughout the history of the church, those that have emphasized faith, those that have emphasized love. Now, as you know, the motto of uh, kingdom faith is faith working through love. It's putting the two together. But you see, he's, he's saying, well, there are some who say, well, you can have faith, but I've got love. I do the deeds of love. I give to the poor and the homeless and the needy. That's good. But it's not faith. Hello? You see, there's this contrast. But we're all called to be people of faith as well as people of love. So we do the love deeds. 
But we do the faith deeds as well. Did I come to the right address this morning? I... Okay. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You see, what, what does John say about love? Let us not love with words or tongue, but in deeds and in truth. Let us not love. You've heard me say it again. We're not supposed to love by just saying, I love you, Jesus loves you, God loves you. Let us not love that way. Let us demonstrate love. Now, James is saying the same thing. Well, you demonstrate love by what you do, not just by platitudes. And in the same way, you demonstrate faith by what you do. Are we all breathing? Yeah. Got me worried for a moment. Okay. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. Yeah. That's right. yes. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. What's he saying? Well, to have faith is not just to say, well, I believe in God. Or I believe who God is. Or I believe right doctrine about God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all the rest. Demons know the truth about who God is. But they shudder because they're in fear of him. You foolish man. I'm not talking to you, of course, but whoever he was writing to. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? That's interesting, isn't it? Faith without deeds is dead and useless. That is, without faith deeds. Not the love deeds, not the compassion deeds. The faith deeds. What, why, why is the Lord giving this message today? Because, you know, I said, Lord, why, why do you want to say this today? He said, because I'm sending everybody out over Christmas to do faith deeds. Amen. Wherever you go, your home, your families, wherever you go for Christmas, you're going to do faith deeds. Oh, you're going to do love deeds as well, because your families need to be loved. But you're going to do some faith deeds. And you're going to come back at the beginning of next term with wonderful testimonies of the faith deeds. Come on. Yeah. That's good. Are we there? Okay. So, faith without deeds is useless. Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? He is, in Scripture, the father of faith, isn't he? Why, why, why was that such a faith action? Because Abraham believed that all that God had promised that would happen through Isaac would happen because God is faithful. Even though Abraham didn't have any scriptures, not even the Old Testament was written then. But he believed that if God was going to fulfill what he promised through Isaac, and he was commanded to kill Isaac, then God would have to raise him in order to fulfill his promises. Now that was faith. And so strong was that faith that he was about to do the deed until God stopped him at the last moment. Okay, was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith 
was made complete by what he did. Mm -hmm. Are we getting this? So faith is not faith without the action. If any of you read my books on faith, which would be a miracle, I think, but if any of you had actually read any of my books, you would have known that uh, in anything you ask, I say that faith is hearing God, believing what he says, and doing it. And it doesn't become faith until you do it. Just hearing it and believing what he says isn't faith. That's just believing that he said it. It only becomes faith when you act upon the word that he has spoken. Some of you are looking worried. This is an encouraging message. It's a liberating, life-giving, faith-releasing message. You don't have to look so worried about it. Why will you see, if your faith is in God, the action will be performed by God. That's the whole point. That if your trust is in God, then God will do it. You see, Abraham believed that God would have to raise Isaac from the dead to fulfill the promises. Abraham knew he couldn't raise Isaac. Hello? You see, there's something that God wants to prune out of kingdom faith. All action that is not of faith. All the stuff we do that we can actually do without faith, God says, forget it. Because it's dead, it's useless, it doesn't produce fruit, and therefore you must stop it. That the only fruitful action is that which comes from faith. Because even, even, even that action that is an expression of love must also come from faith because if it doesn't come from faith, it is sin. So it has to be faith working through love. All that is not of faith is, and without faith it is impossible to so you know the words. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and now God says, okay, you've learned the words, let's see it. <laughs> let's see the evidence yeah. of the faith. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you, you students, God doesn't want you to just go away, have a nice break, come back and say, oh, I've got another ten weeks of making notes. That's right. Come on. I mean, making notes is good. But you're, what you'll find is, you know, when I was at university, I ended up with a stack of notes like this. But what I found when I got into ministry is I never had time to refer to the notes. That if it wasn't in here, it wasn't going to be effective. So I found the only thing that worked in practice was what was in here. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't take notes. Notes is good for a lot of people. It helps you to concentrate. Work things out and go over things. But, you know, you come to the end... Or the notes come to the end of their usefulness. When you're confronted with someone to heal, you can't say, what did Dr. Jim say about this kind of situation? Because the demons will say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who is Jim, you see? That... Because you cannot Minister on someone else's anointing. The demons know who Dr. Jim is when Dr. Jim is ministering. 
But they don't know who he is when you're ministering. Because you've got to do things in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Dr. Jim. That's good. Are we getting it? Come on, you keep holding me up here. Okay, now. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. Verse 19. You believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that, and shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture that was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, you know, there are some clowns that try to put a wedge between Paul and James and say Paul preached justification by faith and James was preaching justification by works. But of course, that's holy rhubarb. Yes. Actually, it's unholy rhubarb. It's not true at all. But what James is saying is if you have got genuine faith, then there will be works. There will be the works of righteousness. The works that demonstrate you are the righteousness of God. In other words, by your faith, you have the power to put right what is wrong. <laughs> are you breathing? And he was called... God's friend. Do you want to be God's friend? Well, Jesus says you are my friend if you do what I command you. So what is his commandment? Just keep your finger in James for a moment and go to the first letter of John. We can't have a morning without John getting in somewhere. Chapter 3, verse 23. And his command, is, and, and this is his command, to believe, say believe, believe, in the name of his son Jesus Christ, and to love, say love, love. one another as he commanded us. So the command of God is to believe and love. Faith and love. Uh huh. But it's not love working through faith, it's faith working through love. Hello? The faith has got to be there first, then you express that faith in love. Love without faith is sentiment, it's emotion. You know, there are a lot of Christians who spend their lifetime, actually, but a lot of time loving on people whose lives are a disaster. But all they ever succeed in doing is supporting the person in his problems. You know why? Because there's no faith in what they're doing. Lots of love, lots of compassion, but no faith. So all you end in doing is just supporting someone in their need. And that's the devil's way of wasting your time. Yeah. <coughs> because people like that have no intention of repenting and having a change of life. They might say it, but they've got no intention of doing it. And the long years of track record prove that. God taught me this many, many years ago at the beginning of my ministry. You will always tell the difference between those who I send you to love and those who the devil sends to waste your time and your energy. And Jesus says, you see, by the fruit you will know them. How do you know those that are just time wasters? Because there's never any real change in their lives. Lots of words, oh, I want this and I'm going to be better. And oh, yes, I want to walk with the Lord and... I so appreciate your help and all this kind of stuff. But you've got to learn to discern that is not the voice of repentance. 
It's actually the voice of rebellion, deception, dressed up in nice language. Is that hard? Listen, real love is tough. It's not soft. Neither is it hard, but it's tough. Jesus was tough in the way he loved people. You see how he dealt with his disciples. He was tough. He was strong. Real love is tough. And if you're ever going to be any good in ministering to people's needs, you're going to have to be tough. Why? Because otherwise faith will never become a reality in their lives. If you're not prepared to be tough. And you know, part of that toughness is to say to people, have you done what I told you to do last time? No. Well then go away again and don't come back again until you're doing it. That's been tough, but it's been loving. That's right. Why? Because Jesus is the only answer. You, there's no alternative. So, if a person isn't going to do what Jesus says, then you can't help him. Nor can anyone. And somehow, sometimes shock tactics are needed. You see, we've got to get rid of this dreamy idea that we're just there to love everybody. That goes, Jesus didn't do that. And we've got to love as he has loved us. Let me tell you, Jesus is tough with you. Full of compassion, full of love, full of mercy, but he's tough. You start going against what Jesus is saying and things will get tough for you. I guarantee it. Why? Because God knows it's the only way to make you sit up and take notice. But that isn't the message this morning. The message is... <laughs> well, seriously, you will waste your time supporting people in their need. Jesus came to meet need, not support people in their need. And if we are the people of faith he wants us to be, we will see change. Change in people's lives. Change in the circumstances. And it will be lasting change. It will be fruit that will last. You know, people won't revert three weeks back, come back again, and they're back in the same disastrous situation they were in before. There's too many people out there that really genuinely want help to waste time on those who don't. Who will just use you. Yes. <coughs> Hello. And you know, I've been there. We've had all kinds of needy people live with us. But you soon suss out the fact of who is genuinely. Yeah. And I mean, you, you, when, when you have these very needy people live with you, it's not long before you have to sit down and spell it out. Right, this is what you need to do. Either you do that or you're, you'll be out of here. Because we haven't got time to waste on people. You, we open our lives to you. We open our homes to you. We open everything that we have to you. Because that's what you do in community. But, if you're not serious, you're a waste of time. You're wasting our time. You're wasting God's time. You're wasting your own time. You're wasting your own life. So people got serious. They realized we were not going to just love and support them in their need. Can you see? So you are making them not people that are dependent upon your love and compassion, but you're making them people of faith. Because when they become people of faith, their needs get met, but then also they begin to be of use to others. Not just hangers on. Are you there? Okay, and he was called God's friend. So you'll be God's friend if you do what he tells you. Believe and love. Faith in love. Huh. 
You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. Why does he say? He's not contradicting Paul. He is saying that real faith always leads to action. In other words, even back in these days, Jesus' brother, James, he was his brother. Jesus' brother, James, was making it very clear that you don't bring someone to the Lord by getting them to repeat a sinner's prayer. by making a decision or an act of commitment. He says, you would tell those who are justified because of what they do. You would tell those who really repented and really believe because there's no new birth without repentance and faith. So you will see the evidence of that by what they do. In other words, James would say, if somebody's just made a decision, repeated a sinner's prayer like a parrot after someone else, they're obviously not saved. Unless you see the works that are the obvious demonstration of faith in their lives. So, you know, these guys, they, 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 they took their cue from Jesus. Jesus didn't have altar calls for salvation. No evidence of anything like that in the scripture. Jesus didn't have his photographs of the crowd, you know, with the wide, 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 wide angled lens. You go to some of these, these African countries, you see, and they have a series of... of <coughs> Photographs these evangelists have been, they've all got their wide angled lenses of the crowd. If you've got a, micro, uh, if you've got a uh, uh, magnifying glass and looked at all the faces, you'd see they're the same faces in every crowd. <laughs> because in Africa, there's, there's a breed called crusade Christians. They go to every crusade and get saved at every crusade, but they never go near a church. It's true. Never go near a church, never get built into a church. I know of a crusade where, I won't mention any names, someone world famous, very famous, there were 10,000 decisions. The pastors in the local church afterwards said not one person was added to the church. Yet all the publicity was 10,000 decisions. Now some, uh, you know, some people get genuinely saved at mass crusades. I'm not saying they don't. But there's an awful lot of froth. Oh, yeah. And an awful lot of money goes into those crusades every time. <coughs> but where is the fruit, the oh. evidence of faith in people's lives? See, if you just want to go to a crusade and be blessed, but you don't want to get built into a church and become a disciple, what's going on? Absolutely right. If you don't want to obey, you see, the command is to believe in the Lord Jesus and to love one another. You can't do that if you're not in relationship. Everybody breathing here this morning. I just feel, you know, I just... Well, when I was praying over this morning, I just felt God saying, it's time for no-nonsense stuff. Come on, let's sort of cut to the chase and get really where it's at and cut out all the superficial, fruitless, all the talk and stuff. Let's get on with the job. Amen. Because I can come here every Tuesday morning and give you a nice little teaching. I go up on the internet and bless a lot of other people. But what God wants is action. But actually, that's not how he started. 
God said something to me this morning. When, when I started to pray, God said something to me this morning. He's never said to me quite like this before. He said, Colin, I'm in a militant mood. I thought, this is interesting. What's going to happen if God is in a militant mood? But see, what is he saying? He's saying, I want you to be in a militant mood because I want your mood to match my mood. And you see, when God is in a militant mood, it's, he, he knows right now, we've had the talk, let's get to the action. When you're militant, you move forward with power. Look happy. Amen. It's Happy Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, listen, let's put it this way. A few faith actions, a few miracles, healings, and everything else, that's going to accomplish a lot more than... <whistles> let me tell you about my Jesus. No, let me show you my Jesus. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous? I mean, this, this is God saying a prostitute was righteous because of what she did. Not in her prostitution, you understand, but in her faith action. I mean... You, you go to uh, the Hall of Faith fame in Hebrews, and she's there as well. This prostitute's got in the book. Yes. <laughs> not, not just the Old Testament book where it all happened. She's got in the New Testament at least twice. Just for faith action. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, God says, well, never mind the prostitution. What I saw was the faith. So now she's in the hall of fame. Praise God. Do you want to be in God's hall of fame? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, I can only speak for myself. The only thing that matters to me is that I fulfill what God's purpose for my life is, right? I mean, that has to be the same for you, doesn't it? You want to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Well, what is God's purpose? He's got all these faith acts for you to do. These are the good works he has prepared for you to walk in. The faith acts. Because he's the author of your faith. So all these acts that he's... They're, they're not going to be works without faith because all that is not of faith is... So he hasn't prepared sin works for you. He's prepared good works for you because they're the works of faith. Well, what about all the other works that haven't come from faith? They count for nothing. Yeah. See, the, this was it. They count for nothing. Rahab gets in the Hall of Fame because she did a work of faith that actually served the Lord's purposes. Amazing, isn't it? Well, I think it's amazing. You know, God has a different way of evaluating things. Why? Because faith in him exalts him. It shows we really do trust him. Amen. You see, there's always a temptation, beloved, for us 
to, to be satisfied or to think we're fulfilling our, uh, the will of God just because we're doing something. You know, you're, you're doing something to help. You're doing something to talk to people about the Lord or whatever it is. But you're doing something. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing something. But you see, the question is, what fruit is it producing? Because if it's the work of faith, it will produce results. And we can be satisfied because we're doing something. But God is not satisfied. What, 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 do, we, what do we do? What, I mean, what, what's going on? How, how do we justify the actions? We say, well, we're sowing. But wait a minute. God says this is harvest time, not sowing time. And he's been talking about us reaping where we have not sown. And the, the reaper overcoming the sower. I mean, we, we can't be satisfied with sowing. We've got to see results. It's true for us, you, you, you guys, when you go out. It's true for the church. It's true for all of us when we go out and minister somewhere. We can't see results. If we don't come back with a fistful of results, God is not glorified. You see, it's not called results in the Bible. It's called fruit. But actually, it's results. It's success. Now, you can't wish healing. You can't wish deliverance. You can't wish anything onto anybody else. But it's seeing that because you have faith, you inspire the faith in others and God answers the faith and the things happen. You know, when, when, when you guys are praying, you, you go off and you have to go on ministry, a team or whoever. And, and the thing you need to do before a meeting is say, okay, what do we actually believe God is going to do? It's very specifically, what is he going to do during this meeting? Because what I've found is that God will do whatever you specifically believe. Now, you can't just make things up. You have to listen sensitively to the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will show you what he wants to do when you believe what he wants to do and you say, right, that's what I believe will happen. It will happen. But if we just say, Lord, we believe you to move at this meeting, he will move at this meeting. But what about the specific things? You see, faith is not vague. If you read anything you ask, and I, I keep saying through that, vague faith gets vague answers. Specific prayer gets specific answers. <laughs> specific. Faith is very specific. See, well, what else do we read here about faith? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and cannot expect to receive anything from God. Well, what does he mean? He means he's not specific when he prays. He says, well, this could happen or that could happen. But if you are in faith, there can only be one outcome. It's so specific. That's why Jesus says, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. That's not a formula. That's true. It's not a formula. It's not just saying, oh Lord, I believe I've received it. You see, faith, listen, listen. Oh. Faith is knowing. Yes. Faith is being sure and certain. Yes. Hebrews? 11, yeah? Sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. There's no question mark with faith as to what the outcome will be. When you pray with faith, you know what the answer will be. You know. How do you know? Well, you know that you know that you know because you have the witness of the Holy Spirit. 
And the Holy Spirit is revealing, is, is bringing to you the word of God in that situation. So faith is knowing. But faith is also seeing. You see, Jesus always operated by faith, didn't he? Hello? Why? Because he saw what the Father was doing. I do only the things I see my Father doing. So you know because you see. Not just hear. The faith comes from hearing, right? Then you work, put that faith to work and you know and you see. But you see it in the Spirit before you see it in reality. Well, in fact, to you, seeing it in the Spirit is reality. As soon as you... You know whatever you see in the Spirit, you're going to see. But it's very, very specific. It's very clear, sharp. Then if you say, well, how do you know? Well, you just know that you know that you know. Because you know that you know that you know. The inner witness of the Spirit, whatever. But, but that's the Spirit of faith operating in people's lives. Are we getting this? In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? She didn't send the spies off. Well, she sent the spies off, but she sent the others off in a different direction. So nobody found them. They, they got, got away. Hallelujah. Then verse 26. As the body without the spirit is dead. When your spirit leaves your body, you will be deaded. Mm -hmm. as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without deeds the deeds of faith not the deeds of love, compassion but faith without deeds is dead Okay, one, one, one last thing. Or well, the first of the last things. <laughs> Just to be safe. We, we can't half make it sound good in prayer here. Can't we? Oh, we've learned how to be aggressive in prayer, victorious in prayer. Uh -huh. We can make a lot of noise. But you see, even that is not faith if it doesn't produce the results. Why, why, why is that? Because God doesn't listen to the noise. He looks at the heart. Just like he doesn't look just at the love and the compassion, he looks at the heart. Well, what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe is going to happen in this situation? Now, why is this such a pertinent word at this time? Because God is saying, cut the action out that is not motivated by faith. And ensure that everything you do has this faith dimension at its heart. Because you see, if that is the case, then whatever we do will bear fruit. It won't just be sowing, it will be reaping. If all you have got is the faith to sow, then cut it out and get the faith to reap. Because God says this is harvest time. And you can't have sowing faith for harvest time. You've got to have reaping faith for harvest time. Yes. <laughs> Pretty obvious really, isn't it? 
So you see, if you've still got sowing faith, you're out of season. You're living in the past. You're out of date. Because God says it's harvest time. It's time for harvest faith. It's faith to reap. Right. So suddenly a whole lot of things are going to be fruitful or they'll have to stop. Now, I hear the, the uh, cafe ministry getting more fruitful. That's, that's good. But we're going to see much, much more fruit. We're going to see, not, not just praying for people to be healed. We've got to see people saved down there. Why? Because it's harvest time. So says, come on, where's your faith now to see all the sowing of all these years bearing fruit in harvest? Yeah. With the bus ministry and every other aspect of ministry, it's reaping time. Yes. If we have the faith for it. Yes. When you guys go out, wherever you're at, well, you know, whatever mission project you put on, you go out with the attitude, we're, reap- we're not just getting people That's to make right. decisions. That's not reaping. But we're seeing people come to repentance and faith, getting genuinely saved and built into the body, so they become disciples that make disciples. That's reaping. So we need reaping faith. How can we reap with sowing faith? I mean, when the, farmer, when the farmer sows his seed, right, he is sowing in faith. He believes that the whole growth process is going to take place. I mean, this is just natural faith, but it is faith. If he didn't believe that natural growth process was going to take place, it, he would not put the seed into the ground in the first place. So he's got sowing faith. But when it comes to harvest time... There's no point in him have sowing faith. He then needs reaping faith that the seed that was sown is going to produce bumper harvest and it's gathering time. So he has harvest faith. After the harvest faith for a farmer, there will be another time of sowing and he'll need the sowing faith again for an even greater harvest. Come on. So, you know, I I just feel that God is saying to us, just saying it's harvest time won't produce the harvest. But the faith for the harvest will produce the harvest. It's believing what he says. So what have we got to do this morning? First of all, we've got to repent. Lord, forgive our unbelief. Forgive us for being out of date. Forgive us for just having sowing faith, not reaping faith. Humble ourselves before God, yes? Not like, oh God, we need revival, Lord. (laughs) said revival. God says, come on, this is harvest time. But I want you to have harvest faith. It's good. It's good. Look, 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 look. The Holy Spirit is not an idiot. You see, the Holy Spirit will only speak what he hears. So where where does this idea that it's a season of harvest come from? It comes from the Father and the Son. It's made known to us by the Spirit. So therefore the Spirit knows that what he's got to work in us because Jesus is the author of our faith, is the faith for the harvest. See? Because he knows apart from him, he can do nothing. 
And he knows that without that faith for the harvest, we'll just go on saying it's harvest time, and we'll go on making a lot of noise in prayer, but we won't see the harvest until we have faith for the harvest. Just saying it isn't faith. You know, all of us can say, by his stripes I am healed. Yes, true. But it's only when you have that faith that you are healed, that the healing takes place. It's the same with this. We can all say, it's harvest time, hallelujah. It's time for abundance. Oh, yes, he said that too. But have we got abundant faith? Apparently not, because otherwise we would see the abundance and we would see the faith, the, the harvest. See, if you are prepared to be real and honest with God, you'll get just about anything you need. Well, you will, you'll get everything you need out of him. But you, you've got to be honest, you know. Honest with yourself, honest with him. And our need at this time, say, Lord, I need faith for the abundance. Faith for the harvest. Thank you that you gave me sowing faith. Thank you that you've given me persevering faith. But now, Lord, I need harvest faith. Yes. Hallelujah. And just in case any of you were brought up with a religious background, harvest faith is much more productive than harvest festivals. Because <laughs> with harvest faith you get people, not apples and cabbages. So hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord and praise Him. Bless you, Lord. Now, you should, you should feel rebuked this morning. Not by me, but by the Lord. Because let me tell you, I'm on the receiving end of this word just as much as you are. I believe this morning we have received a very gentle and very loving, but very timely rebuke from the Lord. Now, when the Lord rebukes you, it's a sign of his love. Why? Because he sees our need. He sees uh, that we have heard and believe what he has said. Right? But he sees there's still a gap between hearing it and seeing the outworking of it. And so... He is showing us this morning why there is that gap. Mm -hmm. So he's rebuking us in love so we can say, Lord, forgive us and by your Spirit work in us harvest faith. Faith for abundance. Faith for multiplication. That faith for advancement. We've had all the teaching, haven't we, for the last few months. Now we're going to see it. I said we're going to see it. Come on, let's just open our hearts to the Lord. You engage your heart with the Lord now. Don't, don't pray in tongues for a moment. Pray in your own language. Pray in your own language. Just, just get your heart right with God <coughs> in the light of his very gentle rebuke. 
I believe the Lord is saying that he's seen a whole lot of activity that many of us, many of us in different ways are involved in. Activity that has come out of love and concern and compassion, but it hasn't been fruitful. Hasn't borne fruit. It's probably done some good, but it hasn't produced fruit that lasts, the eternal fruit. And we need to say, Lord, forgive, forgive me for the inadequacy of so much of what I have done with good motives. But Lord, I realize it is inadequate. It doesn't fulfill what you want to see happening. So thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us in the sowing. Thank you that you've enabled us to persevere and not give up. But Lord, now we need to see results. Because you have said that this is harvest time, it has begun. But Lord, all we've seen so far is just a little bit of gleaning, really. We want to have the faith for the full in gathering. Lord, I believe you're saying that once you have released this faith, we are going to see a, a, a sort of an explosion of activity by your Holy Spirit, that things are going to move so fast and develop so rapidly, we'll be panting to keep up with what you're doing. So, Lord, do it in us now, whatever. Lord, I confess my unbelief that I've heard the words, but haven't really reached out to you for that harvest faith. But I'm reaching out this morning, Lord. Oh, we know you can do it, but Lord, I believe, I believe, Lord, that you have spoken this word of harvest because you mean it to happen. Not some time, some months away, but now that it has to be now that you've already said the season has begun. So thank you, Lord, that you will work in us. Harvest faith. Faith for the harvest, Lord. Faith for the harvest. That we believe that whatever we do in your name is going to bear fruit, is going to be successful. Thank you, Lord, that you give us a holy boldness. Thank you, Lord, that, your, that faith will be upon our lips, that expectation will be in our hearts, that when we speak to people, we will expect them to be saved, we will expect them to be healed, we will expect your supernatural activity. We won't have the attitude of sowing, but we will have the attitude of reaping. Barata para zatari elera bakara zituri satuba. Barata para zatari elera bakara zituri satuba. Barata para zatari elera bakara zituri satuba. Barata para zatari elera bakara zituri sanduba. Barata para zatari elera bakara zituri satuba kara zinama. Barata para zatari elera bakara zituri saratuba kara zinama. Barandaria zato bakara sitri sarato bakara sanduma. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Tura basatara batara basituba. Thank you, Lord, that that our faith is going to be produced in action. It's going to be manifested in action. Thank you, Lord, for the faith actions today and every day. Thank you that as we disperse over Christmas time, we're going to see faith actions wherever we go. Lord, we're going to see harvest in our families, among our friends, in our home churches. Lord, we just want a new mindset. We want a faith mindset for harvest. 
We want a faith mindset for abundance. Lord Jesus, you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. You alone can work this in us. And we turn to you this morning and we say, Lord, work this faith for harvest, for abundance in us. That we will have abundant faith, harvest faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I thank you that you're in a militant mood. Let us catch your mood, Lord. Let us catch your mood. Let there be a new militancy in our prayer, a new militancy in our faith, a new militancy in our action. But all the time in love. All the time in love, faith working through love. Pura tapara zatari eleda bakara sitri sato bakara zanduma. Balandaria zato bakara sitri sato bakara sitoba. Balandaria zato bakara sitri sato bakara zanduma. Balandaria zita balato bakara sitri sato bakara zanduma. Balandaria zita balato bakara sitari eleda masoturi sanduma. Bora lana masuto ba. Bora andare a sito barato perché la sinoma. Hallelujah. Now I believe God is saying, you get what you have faith for. You know, Jesus said to people, didn't he? According to your faith, it will be done to you. And the Lord is saying this morning, you get what you believe for. If you look at what is happening in your life now, that is what you have believed for. That what you see now is the outworking of the faith that you have had up to this moment. So we need to see more, don't we? We need to see greater abundance, we need to see the harvest. So God is saying, right, then your faith is changing. We'll have to change. Amen? Your faith will have to change. That's what this morning is about. Not the Lord just rebuking us. He's just doing that so that we see our need. Okay, just reach out to the Lord now and say, Holy Spirit, just work that abundant harvest faith in my heart. I've heard what you've said. Now, Lord, thank you that you work in me the faith to see it. To see it in the spirit and to see it manifested. Yes. Then thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. That he has prepared good works of faith for you to walk in. He, is already, he has already prepared the works that are the outworking of what you're praying for this morning. He has already prepared the abundance. He has already prepared the harvest. He, he can see it already. Amen. He's just moving us into the right position to be able to receive it all. Come on, just lift your hands to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm receiving it. I'm receiving it. I believe that you give me a new order of faith, a new level of faith. Thank you that what I see happening in my life now is the 
It is the measure of the faith that you have given me to now. And I thank you for that, Lord, because without that faith, I would not see you doing the things that I see you doing. But, Lord, I need to see much more. Hallelujah. I need to see not, not just what you do in me, but what you do among us corporately. Lord, I want to see every promise that you have given me fulfilled. I want to see every promise that you've given kingdom faith fulfilled. I want, you to, I want to see the promises of what you have said you're going to do in this nation fulfilled. And thank you, Lord, that we're going to see what you have promised for the nations fulfilled. Praise your holy name. Borata Barata para zatara bata para zitori zatuba. Barata para zatari eletuba. Okay, now, the Lord, the Lord has made clear this morning that this faith will be manifested in actions. So thank the Lord now you're going to do faith. Right? According to this new thing that God is working in you this morning. Hello? So you are, going to, you are going to take faith steps, faith action in these coming weeks that you've never done before. Come on, thank him for that. that you know, it's, it, it may feel as if you've got to step out the boat and walk on water sometimes because you've got to step out of the known, step out of the secure, step out of your comfort zone unto something that you've never done before. But will you agree with God this morning? Lord, I'm ready to step out in obedience to the leading of your spirit. I'm ready, Lord, to see you do new things in me and through me. I'm, I'm ready, Lord, to see fruitfulness like I've never seen before. Because I do what I've never done before. Barata para zatari eleta bakara sito ba. Barata para zatari eleta bakara sito ba. Barata para zatari eleta bakara sito di zato ba. Barata para zata bara sito ba. Now the Lord is saying, some of you have sown much and reaped little, but it's time now for you to reap the benefit of what you've sown. He's saying, some of you will reap where you have not sown. Don't think that you have got to go through a whole sowing process before you reap. Because this is harvest time. You have been called to be a reaper, not a sower. So don't try to be a sower just because you think you've got to sow your seed before you can reap anything. God is saying, this is harvest time. So what I want in harvest time is reapers, not sowers. Come on, just agree with the Lord. You're a reaper. You're a reaper. Come on, you're a reaper. Oh, I tell you, something's happening in my faith this morning. Even as I speak through this microphone, something's happening in me. I'm a reaper. I'm a reaper. Porasa ta pa karasa ta pa haya. Pa pa parasa ta parasa ta pa kahaya. Pa parasa ta parasa ta parasa tu ba. Pa ta parasa ta parasa ta parasi tu ba. It's time for results, the Lord says. It's time for results.
Okay, now I want you just to finish. I want you to thank the Lord for the in-gathering. Thank Him for the people. Come on. Thank Him for the people. He already knows who they are. He already sees them. Come on, thank Him for the in-gathering of the people. Now thank Him in every area where we as a church have sown, we are now going to reap. You know, the reaping only has to begin with a few, and then it will spread with more and more and more and more. And before you know where you are, you've got a tidal wave. Come on, thank the Lord that every, every aspect of our life in kingdom faith is now going to be fruitful. It's going to be harvest. Come on, the harvest, the harvester is going to overtake the sower. Yes! Yes! Porta para zata para zatuba. Now thank you for the love. That it will all be done in love. Amen. Yeah, militancy, but in love. Determination, but in love. Aggressive faith, but in love. Amen. You'll pack a punch, but it'll be in a gloved hand. Hallelujah. Porta para zata para leto para zatuba. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Give you glory. Give you honor. Come on, let's give him glory. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We're, we're even going to have a whole new range of gloriously anointed songs. They're going to reflect harvest and what God does in harvest. Right, let's let's just thank him for abundance. Because he said this is a time of abundance as well as harvest. Lord, give us faith that sees abundance. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Now, thank the Lord for new people being added to the church every week. Yes. Not, not, just, not just decisions, not just visitors attending but people being added and built into the body, new people every week. Every week. Come on, we, we can... Can you not see it? This is the fruit of the harvest. We're not going to have evangelist photographs. We're going to see people built in and added to the church. Porasata barazato bakarasito disato ba. 
Barata para zatari elera bakara sitri sanduba. Barata para zatari elera bakara sitri satuba. Barata para zatari elera bakara sitri sanduba. Boroto para zatari elera bakara sitri sanduba. Borondari zatu bakara sitri sarara bakara sitri sanduba. Borondari zita balatu bakara sitri sarandari eletu bakara sitaba. Barata para zatari elera bakara sinama. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now, these are all people that you have called and you have chosen. People that are going to move and they're going to step into their destiny. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, that, that you have determined that such a wonderful work is going to take place here in kingdom faith lord you have said there's going to be a move of god that will bless the nations now lord we want the faith not just to hear that but to believe it so we see it so thank you that what you've begun this morning you're going to continue and that faith is going to increase it's going to become more and more militant and powerful and effective. And we just give you the glory, Lord. Thank you that we do not have dead faith. Thank you that we do not have useless faith that produces no works. But thank you. Thank you. With all my heart, Lord, for all the faith works that we have seen and that we're about to see. Oh, we give you all the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shout your praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for listening to this Kingdom Faith podcast. We trust it's been an encouragement to you. For more information and resources by Kingdom Faith and for our other audio and video podcasts, please visit kingdomfaith.com.